Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with number 141 in the series Viewers Games. If you would like your game to be analyzed on Chess to Impress, then you can send it to me by email to classroomchess64 at gmail.com. It is the turn of Wojtek, and I know Wojtek is a Polish name. His last name also looks Polish to me, so I think he's from Poland. Wojtek, I apologize if I got that wrong. Wojtek writes, Hi Rick, I'm a fan of your channel and I really enjoy your commentary and analysis of professional games. I think it's fair that you often point out that some of the analysis was done by a specific grandmaster. I find that some other chess channels are less honest about that kind of thing. I value your integrity and dedication. Anyway, this game I sent was played last year. It's a blitz game, 5 minutes plus a 3 second increment, played on Lee Chess. My opponent was higher rated, and so I decided to play a very old opening that is rarely played these days. I made an inaccuracy on move 5 and a mistake on move 6, though probably not a very serious one. After that, I feel I played quite well, says Wojtek. Well, let's have a look at Wojtek's game. He was white in this game. And he had a rating of 18.17 on Lee Chess, and his opponent was J98H with a rating of 21.26, so over 300 points more than our hero Wojtek. It was played on the 20th of October 2019, and as I said, it's a blitz game, 5 minutes for the whole game, plus a 3 second increment, and Wojtek opened with the e pawn. E5. Knight c3 and knight f6, we have a Vienna game. That's the name of this opening. Here bishop c4 is a popular move, but f4 is the main line. And now d5 is the energetic response. d6, played by black in this game, is the more modest one. Here knight f3 is the main move, but Wojtek played h3, a very rare move. Knight c6 from black, and now knight f3. This is move 5, and as we just heard in Wojtek's introduction, he calls this an inaccuracy, but it seems a very logical move to me. Now black plays h6, and that is not a very logical move. This seems more an inaccurate move than what white played. White could claim that his h2, h3 move was to keep a bishop from g4, but black's h6 move seems like a waste of time. It's not clear why that pawn move is useful for black. But we're nitpicking here, after all we are in a blitz game. After h6, Wojtek plays f4, f5 and calls this, this a mistake. And it's indeed better to not give up on the tension in the center at this stage of the game. Move like bishop b5 developing makes more sense. As a rule of thumb, it's better to complete development before pushing any central pawns. But f5 was played by Wojtek. And here d5 is a good move, the best move in the position, following the guideline that an expansion on the flank has to be met by action in the center. In this case, it also opens up the diagonal for the bishop on f8. Black is very comfortable here after only six moves played. But d5 was not played by black, he played bishop e7 instead. And now Wojtek develops his king's bishop. That bishop gets kicked and Wojtek decides to take. B takes and he plays d3 to open up the diagonal for his other bishop. So far, very logical play by Wojtek. Now bishop e7 is a good move, or castling is a good move. But black plays a strange one, he plays knight f6 to h7. What is the knight, that knight doing there? Wojtek plays a logical one, he just castles. And here castling from black makes sense, but he plays bishop g5. That was the idea behind that knight move to h7. But it's not a good move, Wojtek reacts accurately. He takes with the knight, and after knight takes he plays queen h5. And this is nice for white. White is attacking on the king side. His f4, f5 push has now been justified. That pawn is helping the attack. And also importantly, white still has his dark squared bishop, while black doesn't. 
This can be very helpful in an attack. If white can attack black's position over the dark squares, he'll have an extra piece in the attack. White's bishop has no opponent. That's often an important motif in attacking positions. Black played the knight back to h7, recognizes that his knight is misplayed on g5 and is going to reroute it to his natural square on f6. Rook f3 from Wojtek, a rook lifts. Wojtek is nicely building his attack. And knight f6, the knight is back where it belongs. In the 13 moves that Black has made, he has made 5 of them with his knight. No surprise that he's behind in development. The queen is attacked on h5, queen h4, the only square for the queen, but good enough. And now d6, d5 was played by Wojtek's opponent. And that push in the center doesn't do much for black's position. It doesn't help his development, that's for sure. And there's also a tactical problem with this move. White can now win a pawn, do you see it? Put the video on pause, have a look yourself. How does white win a pawn here? Wojtek didn't see it. And if you did, then you must have seen that queen g3 is a nice move. Little retreating move with the queen, attacking two unprotected pawns. And white is going to win one of them. Wojtek played rook g3 instead. Also not a bad move, but winning a pawn in this position would have been better. That rook is attacking the g7 pawn, and black decided to play king f8 to protect that pawn. Wojtek writes, for some reason, my rival decided not to castle, and this proved to be fatal in the end. Well, Wojtek, it turns out that castling against the storm here would have been immediately fatal. Black assessed the situation well, that castling would not work, and he decided to defend his g-pawn and let white prove that the attack would work. Because why is castling here such a big blunder? Well, then there is bishop takes h6, and that Bishop cannot be taken because of the pin. And now white has terrible threats. Rook takes g7 is a threat. Bishop takes g7 is a threat. Let's look at one example. You cannot counter those threats with g6 because then there is bishop g5. Attacking the knight twice with both the bishop and the queen. And it's only defended by the queen. And the knight is pinned because then the queen on the 8 will fall. So king g7 looks like the only move, but then there is queen h6 check. King has to go back, and after f takes g6, black will get checkmated in all variations. This is horrible, this is not playable. This game will be over in a handful of moves. So in this position, after rook g3, attacking that g7 pawn, black correctly saw that castling does not work, and he played king f8 to defend that pawn. And white has to prove that he can win this position, which is much better for him. Very nice move from Wojtek here. B2, B3. What does that move do on the other side of the board? Well, all pieces want to be at the party. And now white has an avenue for his bishop and for his rook. Very nice move, B3. Shows great understanding of chess. Black decided to take on E4. And here D takes E4. Is the best move according to the engine it keeps the f5 pawn and queen d4 check here is just a check the knight on c3 is not hanging it's protected by the rook on g3 but Wojtek decided to take with the knights and here bishop takes f5 is really the only move and black can still fight after the move that was played in the game queen d4 check which looks like a very good move at first is check and it Attacks the unprotected rook in the corner. Is black back in this game? Well, it looks like a good move at first sight, but black is completely lost after this move. The queen is now moved away from the defense and will be sorely missed, for example, for the protection of the f6 square, as we'll see in this game. So queen d4 check. It looks like a good move. It often is this type of move, but in this case, it is the losing mistake. As said, bishop takes f5 was the only way to fight on. Here Wojtek played king h2, taking the king out of check. It looks like bishop e3 is better. Yes, that bishop wanted to go to a3, but one has to be flexible in chess. 
depending on the concrete position the bishop can also go to that very nice diagonal through c5 and now white can keep his f-pawn queen back and then something like rook f1 protecting the f-pawn so bishop e3 was possible but it turns out that king h2 is also winning here that queen d4 check move was a really bad move and why is it so bad? Why can we not take that rook in the corner? Let's look at that now. Queen takes a1, picking up a full rook. Well, then white will checkmate the black king. It is too exposed there on f8, and it doesn't have enough defenders around it. Bishop a3 check is very strong. Don't go to g8. Why not? Again, put the video on pause. Can you see the checkmate in one move here? Yes, knight takes f6. It's the end of the game. This is checkmate. Very nice mate. The g pawn is pinned. And why after bishop a3 check you cannot go to e8? Well then there is knight takes f6 check. And if you take back the queen takes with a checkmate threat with queen e7. You can play c5. But then bishop takes c5 and then the king has to run to avoid mate in one move. Then there is a move like rook g7. There are many moves that win. I will just show you how bad this is for black. Rook e8 to at least bring one defender close to the, to the king. Then rook takes f7 check. The rook can interpose. But that rook gets taken. King d8 and checkmate on the back rank. Just to show you one variation. So in this position, after king h2, black cannot take the rook in the corner. But he can take the pawn on f5. And that is what black played in this position. But the black king is still too weak and white is completely winning here. Bishop a3 check came. Again, don't go to g8 because of that checkmate in one move. So black played the king to e8. Knight takes f6 check. G takes and queen takes. Threatening checkmate. Similar to the variation we just saw. In that variation, the queen was on a1. On d4 it is not much better. It doesn't really help the king. King d7 was played by black. And Wojtek took that piece. Queen takes f5 check. Which showed that bishop takes f5 check a few moves ago was not a good move. But at that time there was no way to save black's position. Black played king d8. And rook f1 was played by Wojtek. Bringing his last piece to the party. And here black resigned. White is a piece up and has a winning attack on the king. And what does black have? His three strongest pieces are looking at this massacre from afar. None of them is helping the poor black king. Black resigned here after 23 moves. Let's look at one variation to see how this game could have continued. C5 to at least block out one of white's attackers. But then there is a move like rook g7. Very strong. You can try rook f8 to at least defend that weak pawn. It doesn't really help. Queen e6 is a nice move here, pointed out by the engine. You cannot take that queen because of checkmate on the back rank. And if after queen e6 you play queen d6, trying to get some defenders for the king, then rook f takes f7 is a very nice move. It's not really a queen sacrifice because after queen takes e6, rook takes f8 check. You have to interpose the queen. There is no other move. Rook takes, king takes, a check, king d7 and rook takes a8 and white is a rook and a bishop up. Just one variation to show how terrible the position was after rook f1, which was the last move of the game. As said here, black resigned. Well played Wojtek, you played against an opponent with 300 more rating points than you, which is a big difference. But in this game it looked more the other way around. White understood chess much better in this game than black. I'm not sure if you had seen that queen d4 check. Winning your rook in the corner is in fact the losing blunder for black. Maybe you were a bit lucky that this move doesn't work for black and in fact ends the game. But luck always happens when you play well. And luck always happens when you have a good position. That's why strong players are always lucky. They always say that Magnus Carlsen is lucky. They create their luck by having good positions on the board. And a good position is like a healthy body. It's very resilient. 
Well played, Wojtek, and thanks very much for sending in this entertaining, rich and instructive game. I hope you enjoyed Wojtek's adventure in this game. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.